You horny little devil, you. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. I'm continuing my Masculine Feminine Energies film breakdown series with Witches of Eastwick. If you're not familiar with what I mean by Masculine and Feminine Energies, I talk about this in most of my videos, but a brief summary. Masculine and Feminine Energies are energies that live within all of us. We all contain both energies. We all have a core energy that's the one we're most ourselves in. That energy often links up with our gender. It doesn't have to, but it very often does. And we can be in wounded or healed versions of either of these energies. And each of these energies contains archetypes and we actually contain all of the archetypes so we can tap into whenever we want to. I have a lot of videos about the masculine and the feminine archetypes on this channel. And in order to have sexual polarity in a relationship, you need one partner to be in the masculine and one partner to be in the feminine. Because opposite energies attract sexually and same energies repel sexually. So since this is Halloween season, I wanted to do some Halloween themed movies. I gotta be honest with you, I don't like scary movies and I don't like horror movies. They're just not my thing. So I was trying to pick out some films that I thought would be appropriate for masculine feminine breakdowns. I decided to check out The Witches of Eastwick. I believe I had seen this movie before. I thought I had, but most of it didn't really look very familiar to me, so it was kind of like I was watching it for the first time. So Witches of Eastwick takes place in a fictitious New England town, which I live in a non-fictitious New England town. I'm in Massachusetts. We're not really known for being very witch-friendly here, but that's beside the point. Basically, these three women, played by iconic actresses Cher, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Susan Sarandon, play these three single, everyday women in this very sort of quaint New England town. Very religious, very uptight. And these are three very feminine women. In the beginning, they're not completely tapped into their feminine energy, but they are very, very feminine women. In fact, there's a ton of divine feminine symbolism in this movie. It's actually kind of overwhelming. But Alexandra, played by Cher, is actually a sculptress. She does these gorgeous goddess sculptures, and honestly, the one she was working on in the beginning of the movie, like, I want to track that down and find it because it is gorgeous. She literally is a creator. She's literally creating things out of clay, which is very feminine. That that artistic creativity. She's also a mother and she's widowed. Michelle Pfeiffer is essentially the quintessential fertile mom. She has a ton of babies. I kind of lost track as to how many kids she actually had in this movie. It's not totally clear. She's obviously single, but she references a husband at one point, but you don't really know if she's been widowed or divorced. It's really hard to tell, but you know she's got a ton of babies. And she also works for a local newspaper. The fact that she is primarily a mother, that's her main role, very feminine role. She's obviously very fertile, so that's the, the symbolism of the feminine and fertility. She also works for a local newspaper, which, if you think about it, is actually very much about community and connection. It's about the people around her. Newspaper stories, especially in like these small town kind of situations, tend to be about the people in the town, which is a very, very much a community minded aspect, which the feminine is very much about community and connection. And Susan Sarandon plays Jane, who is the local music school teacher. Music is very feminine. Anything sensual and creative is very feminine. And the fact that she works with kids as well is also a very feminine aspect because the feminine is really designed to work with kids be around children but honestly all of these women have a certain part of them that seems to be a little cut off from their full feminine power alexandra is much more serious she seems like she's a little bit more in her mind even though she's a creative suki is kind of being bogged down by all of her responsibilities she seems to kind of not be relishing in motherhood as much as she is feeling a bit overwhelmed by it and then jane is very like buttoned up and repressed she's newly divorced and she's seems to be very shut off from her, her feminine energy. So you first find out about their feminine power in the very beginning of the movie. They're actually all sitting there at this school assembly, like in their own separate places. It's a beautiful, bright, sunny day, and there's this man who is actually Jane's boss who has been hitting on her, which we'll get to that in a minute. He's kind of a sleazeball, like he's supposed to be this very church-going, conservative-minded person, uh, family values thing. He's giving this really boring speech, and he's kind of a sleazeball, to be honest, in this movie. And it's a bright, beautiful, sunny day, and all three women are <laughs> miserable sitting there listening to the speech. And then all of a sudden, these clouds roll in, and because it's an outdoor assembly, it starts to rain and then it starts to thunder and then it's like everybody has to disperse and it keeps raining 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 and it's interesting how the women get together later on and all kind of admit that they were all thinking that they wish a big storm would come in so that they didn't have to sit there through the assembly and it's actually Suki who she seems to be a little bit more aware of what's going on than the other women and she kind of points out that isn't it interesting how they were all thinking the exact same thing and it happened 
And that actually is a theme that is throughout the movie is when the three of them all kind of work together and think of things together, they actually come true. It's literally like they're manifesting their powers and they're stronger together, which is a big aspect of the feminine. It's something that a lot of people don't really want to admit or acknowledge. The feminine is designed to work together. Women were designed to be together in communities. We were not designed to be separate and on our own and by ourselves. Women are so much more powerful when we're together. If you think about it, our, our menstrual cycles literally sync up when we spend a lot of time together. Like we're meant to be together in community and we can harness that feminine power when we're together and, and we can really shift things. We can, and the feminine is nature. We can shift nature. We can change the world. There are a lot of people in the world, and I, I'm not just putting this on men or, you know, trying to label this, but I think the world in general or the powers that be, whoever you want to believe that they are, fear that. They fear that power. So they keep women in this, we need to be separate. We need to compete with each other. We don't see each other as sisters. We see each other as being divided. I, I talked about this in my Devil Wears Prada breakdown. Like we pit women against each other and put us in this competition so that we are less powerful because we don't see each other as sisters, we see each other as enemies. And that's a way to keep women weak because when women get together, we are so powerful. And this movie I think is evident of that. It's like that power, that feminine power gets labeled as being like witches or at one point they're called sluts or whatever. I mean this whole idea that when women get together they have this this beautiful feminine power and it's it's considered weird. It's considered not the way women are supposed to be. We're supposed to be separate or or only devoted to our husbands and not have a beautiful community, not work together. It really is a way to suppress feminine power. And I, honestly, this isn't coming from like a man-hating place. I think honestly most men, especially most men today, have no clue. This is just how we've structured our society and they're just going along with the way that society is structured. They might fear feminine power, but most men don't have any experience or knowledge of what true feminine power actually is. So of course, people in general tend to be afraid of things that they don't understand. So I don't, I don't say any of this stuff to, to try to sound like some kind of a man-hating feminist here, but I do think that it is important that as women, we kind of stop listening to the narrative that women are supposed to hate each other, that women are supposed to be competing with each other, or that we're supposed to, you know, be in this constant state of seeing each other as the enemy and realize that when as women, if we pull our power together the way it was intended, I mean, we can make serious change in the world. We can truly heal the world with that power. And I think that that's, that's something that more women need to truly embrace. And, and honestly, this movie to me, this whole movie was really symbolic of that. So the women get together and they have this little, it's really a manifestation night. Like they're all sitting there and discussing what they're looking for in a partner. They're trying to kind of build the perfect man essentially. And Honestly, it's manifestation. They're literally pooling their energy together and describing the perfect man. Now, what they end up doing, and I think this is where we get into our very religious-minded aspect of our society. I think, too, some of movies like this kind of, they pit this as, as the feminine, as being connected to the devil, so to speak. And what they end up doing is they end up essentially conjuring up the devil. <laughs> Played by Jack Nicholson. As much as I really hate this guy in this movie, like I... The devil is just an awful person and we're gonna get into that. I don't think anybody could play this role better than Jack Nicholson. I mean, he really, really nails the role of the devil. Like this was, this casting was like superb. I, I know a few guys who have modeled their personalities after the character in this movie, to be totally honest with you. So the devil comes into town and he essentially sets out to seduce all three women. The character of the devil in this movie, I was trying to think of the best way to describe this. You could easily call him sociopathic or psychopathic for sure. He's a narcissist for sure. I would say he's a malignant narcissist. And if you want to know more about the different types of narcissism and stuff, uh, there's a lot of other channels that go into way more detail about different types of narcissism than I do. I know a bit about narcissism from life experience and studying, but narcissism itself narcissistic personality disorder is not my main focus i do have a video my annie hall video where i discuss more of covert narcissism i would say in this movie the devil character is much more i would say like malignant narcissist with some grandiose narcissist mixed in He's definitely a narcissist for sure i would say he even falls under the category of like sociopath or psychopath he is the devil i mean he's essentially playing pure evil so obviously he's gonna be flawed right the interesting aspect about 
him is he's such an example of, well, a manipulative man, really. Because of this, his character shifts from masculine to feminine throughout the movie based on whatever he feels like he needs to be in that time, which is usually evident of somebody who is obviously extremely manipulative, is they become whatever they need to be in that moment for whatever that person needs. And it, none of it is true and genuine because they're just doing whatever they can to pretend to be whatever they need to be. It's interesting how with each woman as he's seducing her, he's so like admiring and he speaks so highly of the feminine as if he has this high deep respect for the feminine. You find out later on that that's not true, but in his interactions with Alexandra, he knows that she is a very strong woman, she's a very smart woman and he plays to that. She is more stillness, she's more guarded and he becomes much more flamboyant almost wounded feminine he does talk about his overindulgence and enjoying abundance and things like that which can very often connect to wounded feminine when it becomes an addictive personality she kind of hints that it is in their initial like lunch interaction he's very all over the place she's much more still she's sort of she's witnessing him she's observing him and and he's much more all over the place like he's acting more in his feminine in response to her being more still and being more in her masculine in that moment. He talks about how much he admires women, how much respect he has for women, how much power women have. He plays to her knowing that she wants someone to see her as more than just a body. She wants someone to see her for her mind, for her power. The fact that her career is about creating goddesses, she's obviously got a very high reverence for the feminine and he's really playing to that. And it's interesting because he gives her a tour of the house and then ends up in his bedroom and he essentially decides that he's going to basically just put on a robe. He's like lying on the bed and she's like, what are you doing? It's the first time you kind of find out that he's the devil. He calls himself a horny little devil and is very direct with her because she's very direct. So he really kind of switches that from being more flamboyant and being a little bit more feminine to then being very direct with her. He's trying to shift her into her feminine because he knows if he can shift her into her feminine, he's gonna have more power over her when he's in his masculine. It's a very manipulative thing and, and I'm, not, I'm not at all saying that the masculine and the feminine are manipulative in this way. However, people can use these energies in manipulative ways if you're talking about playing the hot and cold aspect, you can shift from the masculine to the feminine when you're trying to manipulate someone. Now, if somebody is just shifting from masculine to feminine, but they're just in response to the moment or response to the other person, that's not always manipulative. So I don't want anybody to automatically think if somebody is doing this, that it's a manipulative thing. In this situation, we know that it is because it's a film and we know that he's the devil and we know what his motives are. However, in life, people can use these energies to manipulate. However, I don't want anybody to think that that's automatically what someone's doing if they shift. Some people just shift in these different energies depending on the situation, depending on their response to the other person. So, you know, I, I'm mentioning this as him being manipulative because that's what this character is doing in this movie and it can be used that way. However, I don't want people to automatically assume that that's what somebody is doing. That's one of the reasons why getting to know someone and actually observing them in multiple situations and really using your intuition to tune into whether or not this person is being genuine or not, those things are always important. So I don't want anybody to ever dismiss that and just think, okay, because somebody is is more in their feminine one minute and they're more in their masculine another. It's not always a manipulation. However, this shift in energies, he, he in particular in this character is trying to feel into what he thinks will open her so he can get what he wants from her. And this is an example of when that does happen. So now he's more in his masculine. He's being very direct. He even says, I'm being very direct with you. This is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. She, she's hysterical. Like she's basically like, no, like you're repulsive. Like she goes through this whole thing about how repulsive he is how like he's not even interesting enough to her to make her sick like it's just like it's just it's it's classic i just i love her come back to this he then shifts into very manipulative tactics of basically reading her life he's the devil so he kind of knows more about her than she realizes he knows 
and he starts in with basically explaining her life and how miserable her life is. She partly feels seen. I mean, the feminine does desire to feel seen. So even though she's got this masculine wall up, having somebody see her is very attractive to the feminine. And then having him point out all of the ways that her life is not necessarily going the way that she wants it to is drawing her in. He's literally creating a trauma bond with her is what he's trying to do. Now, some people intentionally create trauma bonds. Like when you're talking about like a malignant narcissist, you're talking about a sociopath, things like that. They will create the trauma bonds. So they know what to say to people to create the trauma bonds. Sometimes these trauma bonds, they just happen. Nobody's really trying to make them happen. They just happen because, you know, a person's personality might trigger something in someone else and they end up coming together bonded or, you know, someone's personality might bring out something. I mean, it's sometimes in these situations it is being done very strategically. Trauma bond is not always created strategically. In this case, it is. She gets very drawn in by him because she's feeling fully seen, so she's stepping into her feminine more. It's opening her up. It's making her more vulnerable. Because he's pointing out all the ways that her life is not really going the way she wants. He's kind of luring her into some kind of sexual energy, some kind of shift, some kind of change to doing something that is outside her comfort zone. Now doing him is probably not the thing that she, she really wanted to do. It was outside her comfort zone, but he really lured her in that way. And I think that's an indication that, you know, I don't want anybody to ever think that the feminine or being in your feminine is unsafe. It's not. We have this very big stereotype that if a woman is in her feminine, that she's not safe. Feminine power is very strong. It's not that being feminine is weak, but when you're in your feminine and you're not tapping into your intuition, which her intuition was telling her that this guy was gross, but she was letting him get in her head because she, she was craving certain things. She wasn't allowing her feminine to be fully seen, to be fully in the world. So because she was repressing these things, somebody outside of her was able to come in and give her those things that she couldn't give herself. So she wasn't really fully acknowledging that she wasn't really happy in her life. She wasn't allowing herself to be fully seen. She had a wall up. So when somebody does come in and gives the feminine that thing that she's feeling like she's lacking, it's gonna be much more tempting for her to then give up her power and go to him, which is one of the reasons why I believe it's actually even more empowering for women to tap fully into their feminine because when they realize that they can tap into all that beautiful feminine themselves, when they realize that they are love, they are everything that they're seeking outside of themselves, they become less desperate and needy. They still have that yearning deep desire for a masculine partner, but they're less likely to get drawn in to a masculine partner or a man or any kind of person who doesn't have their best interests at heart. And so actually being able to tap into all of your feminine energy so you feel the fullness of your feminine in yourself is actually going to be more protective than putting up that wall and actually trying to shut people out because what that wall is going to create is, is, a, is emptiness within yourself because you're not allowing anything to come in and fill you. So when something negative does try to come in to fill you up, you're a little bit more in your wounded feminine maybe and you're not really fully tapped into your feminine power so you're more likely to kind of give in. And that's what's happening I think with a lot of these women actually is that what the devil does is he knows what to say in order to entice these women. He seduces Jane. Jane is very buttoned up and repressed. She's very, you know, like top button, prim, proper. He knows exactly what to say to her to really loosen her up. I think Jane actually falls for the devil the most because she's the most closed off. She's totally shut off from her feminine energy. She's also just recently become divorced. So the feminine, when they lose love, they're usually gonna feel an emptiness and they're gonna wanna fill that emptiness. Very often they will fill that emptiness with things that may not be good for them, whether it be overeating foods that aren't good for them or you know, filling themselves up with alcohol or drugs or, or too much shopping or with shoes <laughs> or, or with bad men or something. Like it, they can very often get into that wounded feminine of feeling like they need to fill themselves up with anything they can find because they feel like they've lost love and the fact that in combination with that, Jane has completely shut off any of her sexual energy. When a man comes in and entices that sexual energy out, 
she then becomes attached to him even though he's not good for her he does open her up though he does open up her sexual energy and there's actually a really great scene where jane is actually teaching her music students and they're just doing horribly and you can tell in her whole demeanor her hair is looser her outfit is more wild like she's less buttoned up and the students are just not getting it like they're just they sound horrible it's like it's like mind-numbingly bad and she just tells them to throw everything away just throw away the music throw away everything and just play and she counts them off and then they just start playing and that is such an example of getting rid of the masculine structure for a little while like it's like and i think too with a lot of times creatively when you learn something whether it be music or whether it be sculpture or painting or when you learn something creatively you very often learn the the masculine structure first like okay this is how you do this and this is how you do that and then at a certain point you kind of have to let go of the masculine structure and use your inner feminine intuition and this is with men or women use your inner feminine intuition to like let that flow out she's so tapped into her feminine that she's actually guiding her students to using their own intuition and using their own creativity and then they create something that's so much better than when they were just focused on this masculine structure of music and it's also very interesting how at the beginning of the movie Jane's boss who is supposed to be this very uh, prim proper family man is basically hitting on Jane he's like he's a pervert he's gross and he's hitting on her while she's in her very like buttoned up sexually repressed state he's preying on her because she's so uncomfortable with herself and her sexuality when she learns to truly tap into her feminine sexuality he's not interested in her he's very turned off by her and i think that that's evident of the idea that many men who think that they're masculine actually can only handle a woman if she is repressing her feminine because then he doesn't really have to meet her in his masculine whereas when a woman fully taps into her feminine when she's really in that juicy feminine flow and her feminine creativity and sensuality and sexuality, that's going to intimidate men that are not fully ready to step into their true masculine energy. They're going to be turned off by that because it's going to be intimidating and that's where we get the intimidation factor. You get the intimidation factor often when a woman is really fully stepping into her feminine and a man who may have been attracted to her when she was somewhat repressed because he's very likely repressing his true masculine nature but when a woman fully steps into her feminine her real like juicy feminine flow the men just can't handle that they just they can't and you know what everybody is where they are this is not about right or wrong this is not about shaming this is just about some people are just not in that place and you really need to focus on the people who can meet you where you are and not worry so much about the people who can't meet you where you are it can be difficult sometimes i know especially if you like someone or you're interested in someone and they just can't meet you or don't want to meet you where you are but that's just kind of the way that it works this part of the movie is so evident of that it's like he wanted to prey on her when she was repressed and insecure but when she fully steps into that feminine which should be very much a turn on for a true masculine man not the devil i mean he's a whole separate situation where he's being manipulative but like a true masculine man is going to find a woman in that juicy feminine flow to be so attractive but it's going to scare away men who are maybe pretending to be masculine or have this false sense of masculine energy but if they haven't fully tapped into their masculine energy they're going to find that that juicy feminine flow to be kind of too much that's the too much aspect that's when women get the oh you're being too much you're not being too much they just need less <laughs> you can go find less right so Suki is interesting when the devil tries to seduce Suki and she seems a little bit more aware of what's going on which may have something to do with the fact that she is so fertile and she does have so many children so she's got this very big like divine mother energy around her she actually like calls out the devil and in like well are you gonna seduce me now like she's ready for it she's prepared for it they have a really great interaction he becomes um, more calm with her, a little bit more direct. She has this really beautiful speech where she talks about the feminine in nature and, and the connections between women and nature and how she loves the unpredictability of it. The fact that, 
you know, science thinks they can explain nature, but it's really not explainable. And she loves that things can't be explained. That speech right there is just, it's so feminine. It's so representative of the feminine and how the feminine sees life because the feminine is nature. Of course, the devil praises women about how much he envies women, about how much he wishes he could be like a woman because, you know, women can birth life. They can bring life into the world. And we're gearing up for his big chauvinistic moment, but you know, we'll get there in a minute. He's telling her what he believes she wants to hear about his admiration for the feminine and that gets them together. But Suki is more connected to this. She's more aware. And at a certain point when they start to realize that the devil is not the greatest person in the world and they all start thinking things together, Suki's the one that like, oh no, 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 okay, we, we can't all think something together unless we're sure we want it to happen because we're that powerful. Like she's starting to really pick up on the fact that they all have this power together a little bit quicker than the other women are. So that's where they really get into the witchy aspect. So the women convince the devil to go out and get them some food and they start going through his stuff and they actually conjure up this, it becomes very witchy where they essentially conjure up this voodoo doll and do this sort of spell together and they basically are trying to destroy the devil, essentially what they're trying to do, uh, really to protect themselves. It's in this process and he realizes what they're doing at one point while he's sort of being tortured in this process and he ends up essentially being pulled into this church. And he has this speech that really does culminate all of this stuff. And I think uh, this is something I've seen so many times. I've experienced this in my own life. And I've seen this in so many men in my life that play the, I admire women so much. I love women. I just love women. I love everything about women. I've heard that speech so many times. And those are the guys that end up being the biggest chauvinists every time. If you notice his admiration of women, when he talks to all these women, he basically tells these women how much he admires the things in in women that he knows that these women want to hear. You know, their intelligence, their intellect, their ability to bear children, all of this, this aspects of women that he really admires. In reality, he's actually envious of them. And that's a big aspect that I don't think that people really realize is how many men are actually intimidated because they don't like the fact that there are things that women can do and are connected to that they themselves can't do. And there are a lot of men that end up, and not all men, but there are a lot of men who end up developing a deep hatred of women because of that. And it really comes out at the end when these women all decide that they're just not gonna fall for his lies anymore. They're not gonna put up with his lies and his manipulation and his literally trying to hurt them. And he's trying to destroy them at a certain point, which is all very symbolic. He tries to destroy Jane by making her age faster, which is, you know, a, a big societal fear of women is, is of aging too quickly. He attacks Alexandra with snakes. Snakes, <laughs> very symbolic in many religious literature as to being very connected to the devil and evil, although there are a lot of cultures that revere snakes as being actually a positive thing that actually represent the chakras, the sexuality, and things like that. So there's various views on whether or not snakes are considered a positive animal symbol or whether they're negative but very often in traditional like biblical literature snakes are seen as sort of the devil the temptress that kind of thing the snake and the temptress and adam in the bible like the snake and the woman are the bad guys but the man is innocent until they corrupt him there's some symbolism there and then of course he causes suki to uh, hemorrhage from the inside so the feminine and bleeding releasing blood he's causing her to hemorrhage and they don't know how to stop it type of thing. So he's really hurt women. <laughs> he's really destroying these women. And they finally said, okay, we're not gonna put up with this anymore. We need to get rid of him. We need to release him. He ends up getting drawn into this church and that's where he really spews out how he really feels about women. How much he hates women. He believes that, that God made a mistake in making women. He's literally projecting his hatred and envy of women and their power and basically acting as if they're a mistake. He says like, we should have a vaccine against women. We should be able to do so many push-ups a day and like be immune from women like that whole kind of thing it's like listening to every alpha male podcast that obviously hates women <laughs> it's literally what this is i'm like oh my god i i don't know if like every one of these like really chauvinistic like women hating men has just watched this movie over and over and over again and just literally modeled their personality after jack nicholson's version of the devil but man i know a lot of guys like this <laughs> I wish I didn't, but I do. And honestly, it's men that have not learned how to connect to their masculine energy that feel this way. And this is actually where I think one of the misconceptions of toxic masculinity comes in, 
is men who are masculine don't think of women this way. Men who are masculine have a huge appreciation for women for nature they revere it this idea that masculinity is actually designed to destroy women it's men who are not truly masculine that are the ones that are the most destructive to women they're the ones who hate women because a truly masculine man understands the importance of women he understands that the world does not function without women without nature without things that are innately feminine it's the feminine is so important to the continuation of the world of our species of everything it's incredibly important so a truly masculine man is going to revere the differences in men and women in the masculine and the feminine and not try to diminish it or claim that it's a mistake it's not masculine men that are the enemy it's men who are like this that are the actual enemy i mean he's the devil but I think a lot of men out there have some deep, deep rooted mother issues that are contributing to that kind of mentality. So honestly, this movie is such a, a perfect example of the power of women. I mean, it plays with the devil, so it plays a lot with good and evil and that kind of aspect. The idea that the feminine is innately evil and everything. I mean, it's one of my issues, and again, I respect everybody's views. It's one of my issues I don't necessarily align so much with organized religion is the concept of, you know, women being this sort of evil temptress as opposed to women being these like beautiful divine feminine beings. It is also interesting, and again, I don't want to take this, I don't want to offend anybody with any kind of, I'm not a religious scholar by any means, but the fact that the devil is essentially there to try to impregnate women to carry on his legacy and obviously seems very angry and frustrated that he needs a woman in order to carry on his his legacy so he needs to birth more life through a woman and it, it, there's obviously some really anger and hatred about that within him and somebody pointed out the other day to me that i thought was a really interesting take that even jesus needed a a human mortal woman in order to like birth God into the world whether or not you believe in the Bible or whatever religion is there is there's just some symbolism in that the fact that no matter how divine a, an entity is no matter how divine a religious structure you need a woman in order to birth something into the world every person every human on this planet is here because they were birthed from a woman the fact that we don't really fully accept, acknowledge, or really revere the gifts that the feminine is. The gifts that the feminine brings to the world, literally human life <laughs> to the world. I think it's just, it's symbolic of the fact that we've really gotten so far away from our our natural masculine and feminine reasons for being here. And again, I'm not saying any of this to distract from the beautiful gifts that the masculine brings to the world because I think those should be revered as well because the masculine is equally important. But I do think that our current society really does like to praise things that are much more traditionally masculine, whether it's a woman doing it or a man doing it. We do, in today's society, honestly praise women more for being more masculine, which is, you could dive into the whole conspiracy theory about that, but that's a whole other video. We see things that are masculine as being these sort of tangible achievements. We don't actually take as much time often to really truly appreciate things that are innately feminine that can't necessarily be measured or can't necessarily be controlled in the same way that things that are masculine can be. So if you haven't seen this movie, or even if you have after watching this video, I highly recommend you check out this movie and see if you can pick up on some of the things I was talking about because I do think there is a lot of symbolism in there that really does appreciate the feminine and it is also an example of what to look for if you find yourself with a guy who seems to be telling you everything that you want to hear. I've fallen for that more times than I care to admit, but actually doesn't really believe what it is that he's telling you. He has ulterior motives. So trust your intuition in that sense. Don't believe that every man out there is trying to do that to you, but also learn to trust your intuition when that does come into your life so you can be more prepared for it when it does happen. And beware of men who pretend that they love and revere women, but don't actually. There are men out there who absolutely do love and revere women, understand and appreciate the gifts that the feminine brings. And those are the men that you want to pay attention to. There are some men who are just going to pretend. And a big part of that is tapping into your intuition and also getting to know someone and really observing them because this kind of chauvinistic behavior is going to come out. Even if we're not talking about the devil, we're just talking about 
a regular human man, that facade, that pretend, is gonna come off eventually. So that's why it's important to really get to know people. So you really do find out what their true motives are, but make sure you keep an open heart, but also, observe and pay attention to how people are acting and how people are treating you, how people treat other people, how a man that you're talking to may be treating women or his mother or women in general. Those things are all important to pay attention to. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure you subscribe to my channel. If you have any thoughts on this movie, this video, or any other film suggestions, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I love to hear from you and I love your suggestions. If you'd like to connect to your feminine energy, I have online courses. Details are in the description box below along with links to all my social media accounts. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next time.